Hi everyone, welcome back and most importantly congratulations for being one step closer to getting that Taiwanese scooter license. My name is Lucas Engström and regardless if you've actually passed the written test or just watched my first video in this series, welcome to the second and final video on how to get the Taiwanese scooter license. In my first video I talked about the written test and all the curveballs will be thrown along the way. This video is going to be a lot more straightforward because once you pass the written test there's only one test left to conquer which is the Taiwanese road test. Although it's called the road test, the test doesn't actually take place on the road. Instead, the test takes place on something that can best be described as a miniature go-kart track right next to the DMV. And remember, that's the DMV up in Xilin, not the DMV conveniently located in the middle of Taipei. The video you're watching right now it's actually from the DMV's own YouTube channel and even if you don't understand a single word of Chinese I highly recommend to still go there take a look to get a little bit more familiar with the test and the testing facilities and I will of course make sure to link everything down in the description. So the rules for this test is very straightforward all you have to do is to pass this track with 70 points or more and you will have your Taiwanese scooter license. However, you will soon notice that when it comes to a Taiwanese scooter license, straightforward is actually the most difficult part of the entire test. Let me explain. So the test has five parts. First there's a straight line, then it's a left turn, followed by a 90 degree turn, a lane switch, a right turn, and then finally the Taiwan trademark double left turn. This test shows no mercy. I will actually start with the most difficult task, which is to just go in a straight line for 15 meters. I know this doesn't sound too bad, but the line is actually very narrow, which means that you have almost no margin. Plus, it does come with a seven second time limit, which means that you need to pass the end of the line after seven seconds, which means that you have to ride super slow, super straight, and still maintaining your balance. But Lucas, you said that you only needed 70 points to pass, so how many points will be deducted if you pass the line in 5 or 6 seconds? Okay, so not only will you immediately fail the test, you will actually fail with 2 points for some reason, just so they can really rub it in your face. I should however mention that if you do fail this straight line test, you are allowed to one reattempt. but this only applies to this first straight line. But if you somehow manage to survive the first 7 seconds, then the rest of the test is a lot more straightforward not so straightforward. It, it's a lot easier, but it still comes with a few rules and regulations that you should pay attention to just to not lose any necessary points. Task two and three is a left turn followed by a 90 degree turn, which shouldn't be a problem for anyone, assuming that you're not 193 centimeters and your legs are taller than the handlebar, making it almost impossible to make a left turn. One thing that I should highlight here is that in between all these different tasks, you actually have to stop, wait for a green light, look both ways, and then continue with the rest of the test. And one thing that is important to stress is that you have to wait for the light to turn green and then look. You will actually get points deducted if you just look before the lights turn green but not afterwards. Keep that in mind. Task number four is a lane switch and although there's no time limits here you still want to go super slow to find enough time to turn on your turn signals before you make the switch to the left followed by a turn to the right. The fifth and final test is what I call the double left turn, which we will cover a little bit more later in this video. But for the test, all you have to do is to wait for the green light, then look both sides, drive up, park in the scooter box, wait for another green light, then continue riding out of the testing area, and then hopefully pick up your Taiwanese scooter license on the way out. Now that is actually everything you need to know in order to pass the road test up at the DMV. With that said, I'm sure that if you are serious about taking this test, you must still have a bunch of questions. Where do I get the scooter to actually take the test? Can I practice for this road test? And where do I practice for this road test? Now once you go up to the DMV to take the test, they will actually rent you a scooter if you don't have one already. And they also open up the test facilities, I think 30, 45 minutes before the actual test starts. So you can go there, run a couple of laps, on the actual testing track in order to increase your chances. With that said, most people tend to either borrow their friend's scooter or they somehow already have a scooter which they ride by themselves to the DMV before they're taking the test. When I was there, two people did this, they both failed, then they jumped back on their own scooter and rode back home without the driving's license. 
Now, what I recommend on the other hand is that to find a friend that has a scooter and they can take you to one of the many outdoor testing facilities that are open 24 seven. Thank you, Union. And although the test tracks outdoors looks a little bit different compared to the one they have up at the DMVs, all the different parts are the same and I really, really recommend you to go there, spend a night, spend a weekend and just try to run this track as many times as you possibly can. And that's it, there you have everything you need to know in order to pass the written test in the first video and the road test as well. And if you only care about passing the test, you can stop watching right now. But if you also care about your life, you should continue watching this video because I just want to quickly mention a couple of things that are crucial for your first day out all by yourself on the Taiwanese roads. Now the first thing I just quickly want to mention is the double left turn or the official name which I believe is left turn waiting zones. During the actual test, during all the study material, this is how it looks like. But out on the actual streets of Taiwan, this is what you will see. So basically how this works is that if you want to turn left in a big intersection, you actually need to stay on the far right side of the road then drive into one of these left turn waiting zones, then wait there for the light to turn green and then just go straight ahead. So for example, let's pay close attention to this guy right here. So although he wants to make a left turn, he actually has to stay on the right side of the road, stop in the left turn waiting zone, wait for the second light to turn green and then continue straight up the second road. Now to make this a little bit more complicated is that the left turn waiting zones are not always there. So sometimes you can actually make a direct left turn, sometimes you cannot. And the way you know this is by checking this sign, which may be on the right side of the road, may be on the left side of the road, sometimes it's not even there. The second thing I want to talk about and one of the best things about riding a scooter in Taiwan is the scooter waiting zones at basically any red light. And the reason for these boxes is that the scooters can drive by all the cars waiting for the red light so the scooters will always be in the front of the line when the lights turn green. Now remember that although you're in one of these boxes waiting for a red light, you're still very much part of traffic. So you cannot afford to lose focus. You always have to pay attention and you're not allowed to play on your phone. I'm telling you, this guy was super lucky. If a cop would have seen him playing on his phone while waiting for the red light, he would probably giving him a ticket right away. Unless of course the cop also is busy playing on his phone waiting for a red light. And my final two suggestions before you head out on the Taiwanese roads is that one, the Taiwanese nature is simply amazing and you do not want to miss a single moment of your journey and you might want to brag to some family and friends as well. So I highly recommend getting a 360 camera with a bundling bike kit, something like this, the Insta 361R. This way you will record all the beautiful nature all at once without you risking your safety by having an action camera on your helmet and then trying to point that in the right direction while still trying to pay attention to the road. Second thing I highly recommend is a Bluetooth communication system. I'm using the Blue Rider M1S, which is amazing if you're often out on the road together with your friends and that GPS suddenly starts to suggest a different route or if you just want to take a coffee break along the way. Which reminds me that I'm still very much looking for one of those coffee sponsors. So if you know anyone like that, you have my contact email down in the description. Let's get in touch. And with this, you can connect up to eight different people, all riding together, chatting together, and just enjoying the beautiful landscape of Taiwan. That was everything for this video and this mini series about how to get a scooter license in Taiwan. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please like this video. Please also support me by subscribing to my channel. Share this video with someone who has not yet taken a Taiwanese scooter license. And see you all in the next one.